Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 62. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. All right, here we go. So we are taking part in the Pride of Italy. This is all uh, Italian V12 vehicles. Um, so that is Ferrari V12s and Lamborghini V12s. Uh, we're taking the Diablo GTR. We've absolutely maxed the shit out of this. Uh, we're going to be starting off with Silverstone, Sunset Peninsula Infield, Maple Valley Raceway, Laguna Seca, and then finishing off with Mugello. My favourite racetrack. Let's get going. Alright, here we go. It is time for Silverstone and we got the, uh, Diablo. I, I always... I... I kind of don't understand why this car wasn't four-wheel drive. You would expect with how Lamborghinis were back in the day that this would be a four-wheel drive car. I don't know. Though, to be fair, I think the Murcielago might have been the first four-wheel drive Lambo. I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, going around the corners isn't as quick. Hopefully the music is loud enough that uh, people can hear it. If not, let me know, chat, and I can turn it up a bit. Bum, bum. Mm -hmm -hmm. Can you do a Driver San Fran series on Twitch? Uh, no. I've already done one on, um, YouTube. I've got my full playthrough on there. Uh, I've played through that game twice already. I actually did another playthrough on Twitch. Um, about a year and a bit ago. Sort of about a year after I did the YouTube one. So more than likely, no. I don't really feel like doing another one. Um... Yeah. I might do later on down the line. Might do a 360, another version. Play through the game again at some point, but as of right now, no. I'm not feeling like doing Driver San Fran. I want to focus on my Forza and my WRC playthroughs. By all means, there there is a playthrough on YouTube. Um, if you want to check that one out. Because that one was actually quite enjoyable. We got 14 episodes out of that. But, uh, yeah. Not really feeling like uh, doing another playthrough. It's not on Twitch, it's on YouTube. Whoa. Skirt, skirt. Ain't not bad. Yeah, Driver San Friends. It's a really good game. But it's... It's a disappointment that Ubisoft just gave up on it. To be perfectly honest, like it was a solid game. Whoa. What's happened to my music? There we go, it's back. 
honestly confused what the hell was happening there. Well, no, the driver was kind of killed off in replacement of the crew. Because they obviously had the driver series, and then they stopped making driver, and they started making the crew. So the only thing I can think of is that the crew actually re just replaced the driver series, which makes the most sense. I doubt that they're going to go back and make another driver Sam friend or another driver game. And the sad thing is, if they made a driver San Francisco remastered, like how they did Assassin's Creed, they could quite easily get some good sales for that game. Not even joking. Like Ubisoft execs, if you want, like, I know that they're after money. Like, you can tell with how money greedy EA and uh, Ubisoft are. But the problem is they're trying to get money in the wrong ways that we don't like. It would be quite easy for Ubisoft to get a small development team, give them all the assets of um, Driver San Francisco, tell them, here, remake this, but make it higher quality. Add a couple new cars and a couple new events. And then let us license it. We license it for 500 grand. The game will easily bang 5 million in the first week. Easily. Guaranteed. And there are content creators out there, like Nick Robinson, who absolutely loves Driver San Francisco, that would get sales of that game easily. But unfortunately, Ubisoft are like, no, we want money elsewhere. And it's like... It doesn't make sense. Because the thing is, right, by doing that and making a game like that... Oh, too much curb there. That was not good. If they were to get money that way, right, they would be milking us. Granted, honestly, Ubisoft would be milking us if they decided to release a remaster of that. Because they would be trying to get money in any way, shape or form. But at least we wouldn't be complaining about it. Because it's actually something we want. We want remasters of these games that we can't get anymore. And by all means, I would do it. Uh, Nick Robinson was his username on YouTube. He basically does like um, video essays. That's what he does. Um, I had to think what the term for it was. Yeah, video essays. He does it on different topics. I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with uh, Tidal at the moment. Because my app is just... I don't get how it's so difficult to get out of the dirt in this game. That's the one thing I hate about this game. Trying to get out of the, the dirt when you touch one wheel on it is just impossible. Bum 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 No, Nick Robinson. That's his like Twitch username. Not Vortex story. If you just search up Driver San Fran, Nick Robinson, you'll get the video. It's titled something like, uh, the game Ubisoft doesn't want you to play or something. A really entertaining video, actually. He buys the game with a Subway gift card, which is kind of funny. Yeah, by all means, if you get moments to stream, stream. Because it's it's a good way to uh, spend the time. Like, 
especially if you're trying to grow your Twitch channel, any time that you can stream is always a good time to stream. <laughs> yeah, it is that video. Right, we'll do this for now. We'll pause the music, uh, and I'll try and fix it after the after this race. I don't know what's going on with it. It's just stuttering. Yeah, well, to be honest, focusing on the views isn't the focus point. When it comes to making YouTube content, you focus on the views. Um, that's just how YouTube is. YouTube is a platform based off of numbers. People don't stick around to support creators. They stick around to watch content. That's about it. Twitch, on the other hand, is slightly different. People will stick around more for the content creator. Um, and as a streamer, you should always focus on, um, the chatters. How many people are chatting in your stream rather than actual numbers. That's why when I see people lurking in my chat, I sort of, they end up just fading out of existence in my mind because of the fact, even though I appreciate them sticking around and adding to that view count, the view doesn't do much towards actually helping the stream grow. Um, and especially with my mentality of where I just focus on people that are chatting, sitting in the background very rarely gets acknowledged. Um, and that's sort of how a lot of streamers, if you're chatting in chat, you're making yourself known that you're there, that you're supporting the creator. And that's sort of where Twitch is slightly different to YouTube. YouTube will just, everyone just blends into it as a number at the end of the day. So yeah, focusing on views is fine on YouTube, but it definitely isn't on Twitch. The focus on Twitch is to get people chatting. Which uh, is kind of the point of these streams, you know? So these, um, specifically these Forza streams, we just sit and chat about stuff. Chat about random stuff. And hopefully get Twitch chat to interact with those chats as well. We chat with Twitch chat. All sorts. Um, I've done it again. I've taken too much curb. UV have cancelled some games. Yeah, they cancelled, announced that like two months ago. They're going to be cancelling it in September. Driver San Fran is one of those. Honestly, though, Ubisoft could get so much money if they did a Driver San Fran remaster. Sell it for £30 a game, right? And they'll have £5 million in a week. Guaranteed. They will have £5 million in a week. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, for me... If there was 30 people viewing my stream, but only one person chatting, I'd see that as a fairly inactive stream. And that's just how it goes on Twitch. So, by all means, help help the streamer. Help chat in their chat. Conversate with them. But lurking doesn't achieve much. It adds to a number. And by all means, if, if your goal is to get partner, then yeah, maybe lurking does help. But other than that... Unless you're trying to push for partner, um, a lurk does absolutely nothing to help content creators on Twitch. On YouTube, it's slightly different because it actually does help because people are actually watching more content if you're lurking in the background of YouTube stuff. I forgot to press start recording. Again. I keep doing that. Yeah, so sometimes it can be quite difficult 
Um, and it can get a little boring to stream, but you just got to push through it half the time. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Whoa! Ah, oh, I've messed up my suspension, man. And my front bumper's gone. Lovely. That's why a lot of the time when I um have like smaller creators, as long as they've got like a Twitch play, uh, not a Twitch playlist, a YouTube playlist that I can click on their content and just watch it. Um, I'll sit in the background and I'll watch some YouTube playlists and just scroll through it. You subbed three months ago. That's interesting. How did you find my Motorsport 2 stream then? Did you find that through Twitch or did you find it through YouTube then? I find it really weird that these exhaust tips are like floating. Like, they're being held up much further into the car. But they are pretty much just floating there. I think that's pretty cool. Done the same thing again. Too aggressive. But yeah, I'll just sit there and I'll watch some YouTube playlists in the background. And especially if someone is like over a thousand subs and they've got ad revenue, it really does help. Watching those streams in the background. It's a good way to help out channels. Um, on YouTube. A lot of people think that the way to help a YouTube channel is by getting their content views. And that's further from the truth. In fact, Giving a channel views, but not giving them the watch time actually damages their content a lot more than it helps. Um, but so many people have been misinformed over the years. and Like, non-content creators talking to non-content creators are like, Oh yeah, the more views you get, the better the video does. It's like, no, if you're an actual content creator, you'd realize you need the watch time, you need the likes, and you need the views all together to be going up at the same rate so by clicking on a video and then clicking off of it you're not adding to watch time so that video is not going to be doing much you know that's brilliant only on YouTube when I'm looking for a Dirt 2 play Let's Play. Didn't pay much attention to the guy talking. Hell, <laughs> the channel name just watched. Coincidentally, I go into Forza Motorsport 2 section, see you streaming, and just now when I check your YouTube channel, I see it's the same guy. <laughs> that is that is a coincidence, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, Dirt 2 was one of my more favorite playthroughs that I did. If, if you actually look on my YouTube page, you'll see I've got like a favorite playthroughs section that's just got my favorite playlist Dirt 2 is one of those it's such a fun game um, actually um, fun fact that last video on that playthrough where it's got the tribute video for Colin McRae um, where it's got that Biffy Clyro song um, actually just got completely demonetized. Like, I don't earn any ad revenue off that. Now, normally, that's a problem and I'd normally mute the videos, but I decided for that one video, because of the fact that that was like, um, it's a Scottish band for a Scottish driver, it was a tribute video and all that, I left it in. I left the music in and was like, I'll take the demonetization because I'm, I'm not muting it and ruining that experience. 
So, yeah, that last video, I had no ad revenue at all, no matter what. Even if I got a million views, I'd earn nothing out of it. But it doesn't bother me. <laughs> like, that entire series itself was just so much fun to make. And actually, uh, that Dirt 2 series um, was... I don't know if you were listening earlier on in the stream when I was talking about uh, my laptop dying. But it was actually that Dirt 2 series where my laptop did just completely die on me. Um, as I was recording, and I lost pretty much a large majority of my series. Like, my entire playthrough was gone. Uh, so I had to, for one stream, I basically streamed the first four episodes, or six episodes, whatever it was, basically streamed me doing it. Doing the first races. Till I got up to the same point in my playthrough, and then I continued again and re-recorded it. But I was so annoyed that I'd lost it all. I was livid. Yeah, the the problem with YouTube and the tough part for me was definitely the watch time. Trying to get the watch time. Because I, the subs were the easier part, to be honest. But getting people to watch 4,000 hours of content is a lot more challenging if you don't do live streams. If you do live streams, it's actually fairly easy. Just people lurk in the background. You could have the... Oh, shit. You could have the 4,000 watch hours by the time you're at, like, 200 subs. Quite easily. Um, but when it comes to, like, just making normal video content, it's a lot harder to get the watch time. Oh, nice. Yeah, glad to hear that you um watched the whole of that Dirt 2 series. It's actually good to know that that thing's still getting views. Even, like, I think it was over two years ago that I did that one. I can't remember whether it was um, early 2020 or late. No, I think it was, like, early 2020. Very early 2020. But the... What the fuck? The car wouldn't come out of the wall. Yeah, that, that Dirt 2 playthrough was done on the, uh, I believe, the Xbox 360. Um, kind of disappointed that I did it on... That I didn't have my PC at that time. If it wasn't for the hassle and the fact that it would be such a pain in the backside, I would re-record that entire playthrough on PC... And have like, I'd record it at 120 frames and try and upload it as a hundred, a 120 FPS video for YouTube. It would look odd, but I would so do it. I really think YouTube, like, they've been focusing on 4K content, but I would love to be able to upload something in at 120Hz. I think YouTube should actually focus on adding 120Hz as an upload option. Because let's be honest, 120Hz 1080p is half the, fra half the quality of 4K 60. So it could quite easily be done. Quite easily. And there are lots of phones. My phone now costs 300 quid and it's got a 120 hertz display. It could make the most of that. My display that I'm using now is 165 hertz. I'd be able to watch 120 hertz videos on that. Yeah, 15th of April, that's... Yeah, I'm... I don't remember the days that I start the series, but I do remember roughly when I start them. Like, I know my Just Cause series was at some point mid-2019. Uh, my Forza Horizon 4, the original one, was the 29th of September, the day the game came out. Um, Far Cry New Dawn, I did 
uh, February 2019 at some point. Along with um, the Division 2, I did March 2019. The original Forza Motorsport 1 playlist, I started... Probably early September, I believe. Not 100% sure, though. But then I sort of scrapped that one. Um, and then just redid the entire series on YouTube. So the second version of that series is like April 22 now. April 2022, sorry. But yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed making content for YouTube. It's just, it got tedious. I stopped enjoying it for a bit, but now that I'm properly enjoying doing like Twitch and stuff like that, I can do both at the same time. I can record for Twitch. Uh, sorry, stream it on Twitch. I get myself a day of streaming, and I also get myself four days worth of YouTube content. Win-win. You know. By the way, there is going to end up being um, 72 episodes of this Motorsport 2 series. So, I believe right now we're on episode um, 62. So, we've got another 10 episodes to go. Result. Do, 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 do. And there's the win. Thank you very much, sir. All right, here we go. Let's get going. We're around Maple Valley. Currently doing Magello Club Circuit. Do you know, Magello is my favorite track at the moment. I really enjoy the way that that track flows. Because it does flow a lot better than majority of the tracks in Forza. Uh, Twin Ring Mategi is pretty good. Only problem is, I believe that track's only featured in Motorsport 4. I don't know if it's featured in any other Forza game. It might be in Motorsport 3 as well. But uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. But I know for a fact it's in Motorsport 4. I can say hands down that Motorsport 4 is the best Motorsport in the entire Forza franchise. Hands down. It's the one that I've had the best experience with of later date like enjoying today the only thing is that Motorsport 3 has a closer place in my heart with it being a childhood game that I played a lot so that's why it Motorsport 3 gets more points in terms of how much I'm going to enjoy that playthrough but again You know, it's going to be exciting. Falling back to me. Oh, that was a perfect corner. Let's go. Not bad. Oh, no. There we go. We are fine. Like wine and chicken. <laughs> Good old chicken strips. Look at all those chickens. Not bad. Uh, yeah, you can send it through Discord. Um, I'll uh, have a look at it when I'm... Uh, next on Forza. Oh, shit, which will probably be on... Uh, maybe on Tuesday. 
I might hop onto it, try and get that Formula E car. Uh, not Formula E, um, Extreme E, that's it. Crawling back to me. I got the right temperature. Oh, uh. not bad. <laughs> what about chicken strips? <laughs> Such a good thing. I got the right temperature. Oh, uh. Oh, I was doing so well trying to keep that together and then I just lost it at the end. Got it, mate. Got it. I do like the size of the wing on the back of this, by the way. It's quite nice. I've gone into the pits. I've underseared into the pits. Um, okay. That was... <laughs> How the fuck have I done that? <laughs> I was looking at chat and I was expecting my car to go round the corner and it underseared into the pit lane. Fuck. <laughs> That's just despicable. <laughs> that is ridiculous, honestly. God, I now can't drive the thing. I got the right temperature. Uh, so I turned it down to the easiest difficulty a couple of episodes ago. Um, and I forgot to put it back onto medium because there were a couple of um, unrestricted events that were just ridiculous. Um, and also, one of them was you had to take an R4 class vehicle and I couldn't find the right vehicle that I could drive efficiently enough. So I turned it down and I've forgotten to turn it back up. Um... And to be honest, with very little events to do, I can't be bothered. But I know that the motorsport games beyond this are so much more fair with their AI. Motorsport 1 and 2 were fairly unfair, their AI. Um, there were some extreme differences in performance, where some would perform way higher than they should be. Um, Motorsport 3 and 4 were fairly balanced, so I don't think I'll be having that problem when it comes to those later games. Uh, Motorsport 7 is a little more unstable with its AI. I think some of the AI is a little more challenging in some of the events, like the higher end faster vehicles. They are a little more pinpoint. But, I mean, there's so much customizability when it comes to how difficult you want the AI that I could bump it down one and it would be like a small difference that would still mean I could have an enjoyable experience. Um, obviously, I'm not a professional gamer. I'm not trying to be the best. So I play on what difficulty that I feel like I can complete the game on and enjoy the game. I just want to complete the game doesn't bother me whether it's the hardest or the most difficult so don't like fm2 ai i play easy on this game fm3 i play easy to medium because i'm basically playing the game for the achievements 
There's one for winning every race. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's not good. Um, cool, I got two laps of an extremely damaged Lamborghini to do. Should be fine, though. We're miles ahead. Um, yeah, so... I'm pretty much similar. I'm not a professional gamer. I, I like being able to complete the game and have fun. And I think it doesn't matter what difficulty you complete the game on. If you complete Forza Motorsport 3 on easy... But yeah. <laughs> a bit dead is an understatement, I'll be honest. The car's very dead. <laughs> but yeah, like... Just completing Motorsport 3, the entire thing, whether it's easy or hard, is an achievement in itself. Any game... I mean, if it was a game that was like four hours long and you completed it on a easy, maybe you could try again. Try and complete it on medium. But again, any game that you complete, no matter how long it is, is still an achievement. Whether it's easy or hard. Um, there's definitely a lot of negativity out there um, where people are like, oh yeah, I've completed this on the hardest difficulty. I'm like, well done. I don't want to do that. Um, I know there's been a couple of people that have come into my chat and said that, and they've accepted that I don't want to do that, and that's good. Like, some people can want to do it on a harder difficulty, some people don't have to. As long as you can accept that, that's fine. But I did have one individual who has been banned from my chat, because I didn't want him here, um, who was like... Um, well, you're not really truly 100% in it if you're not doing it on the hardest difficulty with completing all the cars. And I was like, well, that's not what I'm doing. I'm playing through the entire game to my standard, not yours. <laughs> and uh, the guy just wouldn't accept the fact and was like, well, this is just a fake 100% playthrough. I was like, define 100%. There's multiple different definitions of a 100% playthrough. When you look in the Guinness Book of World Records, there's multiple different 100% playthrough definitions. Especially when it comes to games and, you know. So, yeah. I, for me, it, I'm not fussed. Complete the game at whatever feels comfortable for you. Some of my friends are like that on Halo and Cod and Forza. Yeah. I used to have a friend, um that I played Siege with, and he got proper toxic. He thought he was a professional player. Honestly, he was utter crap. Like, he was terrible at Siege. Um, but in... There was one incident where I was like, right, I've had enough. Because he would constantly... If anyone killed him, they were a hacker. If he got killed by someone, they were a hacker. Because there's no way that he could have died normally. Um... And at one point, I had tried to shoot an enemy, but um, he was behind that enemy. And this was back when Siege did, like, penetration damage. So I killed the enemy, and he was behind it. He was mad that I took his kill, and then team killed him afterwards. Uh, so he shot me the next round, killed me in the next game, and I was like, what the fuck? And... Uh, to the, that day. I have not spoken to him since. I have not played Siege with him since. Uh, and it's for the better, because I don't need toxic people like that to play games with. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca. Bingo chicken wings. Give me a sign. Tell me what you What they say, oh look, Halo MCC on the easy, but if you look at me completing every campaign on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like. To be honest, with like, games like that, a any game, like, it's all about the experience and how much you enjoy the experience of the game. 
That's what gaming should be about. And what gaming used to be about before multiplayer came out. Like, I'm not even joking. People would play, like, PS2 games and would chat to their friends about it. They wouldn't care about what difficulty you were on back in PS2 era before multiplayer properly took off. But now that multiplayer is such a big thing, people are like just constantly competing to try and be better than each other. And I mean, that's fine if you like that toxic bubble, but that toxic bubble shouldn't be forced on anyone else. Like, that's why I think games should be less competitive. And if I made a game, it wouldn't have multiplayer. Or if it had multiplayer, it would have multiplayer, but no leaderboard function. There'd be no statistics page. There'd be nothing. You would play multiplayer and enjoy it. Like, I honestly, if I was to ever make my own game and I had to feature multiplayer, like if Sony told me you've got to feature multiplayer, there would be no stats page. There'd be nothing that you could compare each other to. Oh, how many wins have you got? I've got a thousand wins. Prove it. Well, I can't prove it. Ha, tough shit. Because no one... No one would be able to argue that shit. And be able to say, oh, I'm better than you. Look at my wins. You know. Because there's no way of tracking it. Yeah, exactly. I'll play my games how I want to play them. You play them how you want to play them. By all means, if you want to watch my content and enjoy the conversations, the topics that we talk about, and enjoy seeing my experience playing through every single Forza game and follow me for my journey, then yeah, watch my content. If you're looking for someone who's extremely sweaty and plays every Forza game on the hardest difficulty, watch other people. Watch a different content creator, because that's not me. It never will be. It's not going to be. There's not a chance in hell you could do that. Even WRC, a game that I'm actually surprisingly good at. Like, I got 380th on one of the leaderboards. A um, couple of days ago. And I was buzzing. But, like, even then, I didn't... Wouldn't ever go and say to anyone that was below me, like, Oh, you're shit. Like, you know. I had a good run. I got a good result. But there are other people that get good results and that are proud of their results, and they should be proud of their results, whether they come 200,000th or first. You should be proud of your result no matter what you get. If you improve on that result, even better, because you've beaten yourself and you've proved, improved yourself. Like, that should be the only person you compare yourself to is yourself whenever you're gaming. Make your times better compared to your own, not compared to other people. And by all means, if if you're with a mate who's got the same mentality as what I have, and you're both like, oh yeah, let's see who's better at this, but like, it doesn't matter who wins and who's worse, that's a good mentality to have. I played a game of Project Cars, and I was winning and losing races against one of my mates. We were doing Project Cars VR. I didn't care if I lost. I didn't care if I won. We were having fun driving cars in VR. Like, what? what's not to enjoy? So, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's just too toxic. And I mean, I think the toxicity is part of the reason why gaming has sort of tailed off a bit. Because a lot of developers are getting bored of developing games because people are complaining that they're all shit. And it's like, well, if they're shit, don't play them, but don't shit on a developer. You know. Um, there's a lot of people that... It's just too much toxicity, and I think that's why the gaming industry has gone downhill. Um... And I've seen, like, TikToks of these companies like advertising these like gaming dating sites and shit like that but there is a fairly valid point it's a bullshit advert i think it's like plink or something i'm not sure what the apple is but um the app's probably bullshit they're all fairly clickbait uh i use the word probably because i've never tried it but come on let's be honest 
but one of the points that the TikTok made was that, oh, gaming back then, thousands of people online, people were wanting to play one more game and all that. And nowadays, no one's online. And it's because a lot of people have just gotten bored of the toxic mentality that gaming just isn't as enjoyable because guess what? It's too toxic. Yeah, I mean, I'll admit, I do that with my mates a lot, if, like, they're ignoring my calls, and I'm like, fucking answer, but, like, I do that very rarely, but, like, I wouldn't spam 50 or 60 times, I'd, like, call them, like, three or four times, if they ignore me at that point, like, clearly don't want to talk, like, you know, or they're at work. <laughs> but like you know it's just so ridiculous I really don't enjoy it and I will say this now I don't care if anyone's a Fortnite fanboy go fuck yourself <laughs> Not literally. Uh, I am joking. But, I mean, Fortnite is a really interesting idea, but I think Fortnite ruined the gaming industry. I genuinely think Fortnite has ruined the gaming industry. Because Fortnite did something that people accepted. They had a battle pass. Unfortunately, too many games are focusing on these battle passes. Um, yeah, I mean, Fortnite just, in all honesty, gaming has gone to a free-to-play initiative, because unfortunately, a lot of little kids want to play video games, but they're not allowed to buy games because they're, you know... Oh no, you can't buy that game because it's too expensive and whatnot, which is fair enough. But to make a free-to-play game that then has in-app purchases as extreme as Fortnite is ridiculous. And I mean, Fortnite is understandable more because it doesn't change the experience too much. Like, it's just cosmetics. Granted, they are ridiculously expensive... And, I mean, you think, I can't play any video games with my brother, right? Because he's constantly on Fortnite. The only game that he plays is Fortnite and Forza Horizon 5. But the thing is, I don't really play too much Forza Horizon 5 because I'm busy making content. Uh, and by that point, I don't really feel like playing Forza 5. But I have so many different games that I could play with him, but he will refuse to try them out because it's not like Fortnite. And it blows my mind. I think I got him into one game out of all the games I've tried to get him into, and that was Uncharted. And I mean, honestly, like... Fortnite has ruined the gaming industry as a whole. Granted, Epic Games has done good stuff battling with um, the Google Play Store and the Apple Store to get uh, third-party payment providers so that um, Google and Apple don't have a monopoly over purchases. I think that's really good. But their game itself, Fortnite... And then Rocket League, and now Fall Guys doing the exact same thing. It is ruining gaming as a whole. The entire gaming industry. Like, when games you paid for the... Because here's the thing, right? You look at Halo Infinite, right? A game that is paid for... Uh, technically, there's a free-to-play mode. But a game that you can pay for... But you can pay extra to be in with a chance of earning stuff. It's similar to Call of Duty, 
You, uh, actually, Call of Duty, yeah, is a great example. So you pay how much money? £80 to buy Call of Duty. £70, £60, whatever it is. But then you can also, if you want some skins in the game, oh, you've got to pay an extra £10 every uh, two months to get their battle pass. Like, that's a game that you pay for. And you can pay for a battle pass to get more stuff in a paid-for game. And it's limited time. So unless you play for a lot of time, that £10 that you've spent, you might get less value out of that. And that's so ridiculous that you can pay £10 for a thing, but not be guaranteed to actually receive that stuff. Like, I, I don't understand how that mentality actually got into people's heads. Like, I don't understand how gamers, like, are so pissed off over this Ubisoft thing, right, where uh, Ubisoft are uh, not allowing you access to the game now, to, like, DLC content, but gamers will be so happy with Fortnite, where if you don't play the game enough and don't earn the stuff, that you pay for, you just don't unlock it. And you will never get a chance to unlock it ever. Gamers are so happy with that, though. It makes no sense. Like... I don't know whether it's just people don't see it that way. And that's why they don't see it. Or whether they genuinely are like, oh yeah, well, if I don't play the game, that's fine. I don't need it. But you spent £10 to get these products, but you're not guaranteed any of them except for the starter level stuff, for the first tier. You're guaranteed one skin out of that purchase, the rest of them you have to unlock, and if you don't unlock them in time, you lose out on it forever. Like granted, if it was a battle pass where it was free, maybe it'd be more reasonable. But for something you pay for, and then you lose access to that content if you don't unlock it in time? What the fuck? Why do gamers think this is okay? Well, clearly, I don't think it's okay. But apparently I'm not a normal gamer, so, you know. Friend Tom plays only Fortnite and Minecraft, but he won't try new games. He has Game Pass and plays nothing on there. It's Fortnite, Fortnite all the time for him now. Why does he pay for Game Pass, then? All right, here we go. We're going around Magello now. Oh, we got a six-race championship after this, I believe. <laughs> What's up, Big Boss? How you doing, man? Uh, Big Man is saying... What's up, I guess. <laughs> rum, rum, rum. We've just been having a very long debate about how uh, to toxic the uh, gaming industry has become. And why it's in such a shit state. I mean, it's not even that, like, teabanging someone after dying, it's just like a normal thing. But like, it's, it's when people are like, absolutely shitting on other people. Like, it's, it's not even just like competitiveness, even though competitive is a ridiculous thing. Hey, no worries, no worries, yeah. Go get yourself that vape. Um, but yeah. 
even like if you put competitive multiplayer aside as toxicity like there's so much toxicity outside of just multiplayer gameplay you're planning on considering that as sexual harassment there's no way you can consider that as sexual harassment like you physically can't consider that as sexual harassment there's nothing sexual about it That's like saying walking into the street is classed as sexual assault. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they genuinely cannot... Cannot class that as that. It's stupid. But like, there are so many parties. I do like to play with my penis. Thank you very much. <laughs> Glitch, what is up? Welcome. <laughs> That's such a good voice line. Brilliant. Uh, I haven't watched it. I really can't be asked. Uh, what in the hell is that? Bing, G, Bing. What? Can you send it to me in direct messages on Discord and I'll have a look at it on there? <laughs> I was going to say, what? That's a long link. Uh, only reason I like it in uh, Discord DMs is because of the fact that I've got my Twitch chat integrated into OBS. So trying to load a link is next to impossible. Because you can't load full web pages within uh, OBS properly. So... I've been good, Glitch. Thanks so much for asking. Yeah, I've been, um... Basically, I had to replay the entire of my first recording session of this stuff. Um, the uh, Maserati stuff that I did on Friday. Because, guess what? My computer wanted to corrupt every single video file I made. So I had to redo it. Which is fun. Uh, thank you very much for that, Kodo. I'll have a look at it in a second once I've done this race. Yeah, so we've um, we actually gifted our first sub into the chat because we filled that uh, gift sub goal today. So that was pretty good. Um, I copied the Bing link, or well, the website link. That's why it's so long. That's what she said. Yep. <laughs> I, I would have said that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for that posture check. How are you today? Um, yeah, so... Our progress is reset, but uh, we've already had one sub towards our next goal, so we're four more subs away before we can gift another one. If we hit that today, I'm gifting the sub the same day. Na 
Oh, my leg is fucked. Where is my music? I genuinely cannot hear it. But then again, it is coming out of my Bluetooth speaker at this point, so I have turned it down. It's probably turned down too much. bad. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Get back on the track, you pleb. Probably turn some lights on in a minute. Yeah, because it is getting dark, so I need some lights so that my face actually doesn't look like a ghost. Flashbang, bitches. Right, one more lap left to go, and then we're done. This video is definitely going to be about an hour long, which sucks. I just want to get this game done. I'm kind of bored of it at this point. I don't know how I'm going to feel about Motorsport 3 and 4, because that's going to be ridiculous. Because they're so much longer. Let's just hope I don't get bored of those. There is a lot more variety in terms of, like, events in those games, so it should be a little easier. So, with this game, the variety not being that extreme, so... We haven't mixed up the cars that much. It's sort of just been, like, horsepower limits, classes, countries, and stuff like that. Balls. Back on track. Ding 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 bad. Coming around the final corner. I've just noticed the headlights look like, uh, the tail lights look like, um, what's it called? Pac-Man. Looks like Pac-Man. Fuck my car. Lovely. Right, I'll take that result. We got all gold in the rivalry face-offs, but that's only 30 gold. 30 G rather than 35. Me no like you that. I think I should have deserved a little more than that. At least the same as the other one. Got Pagani out of that, and we got 304 grand as well. Result. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.